So this week mostly Vajuga will explain the progress that we made. So we had a problem, I don't know if you remember, but we had a problem with uh, creating a new index. Mm -hmm. It was not working well. It was just doing the same thing. So it was a problem with the optimization part. So Rodrigo is you know, more equipped to uh, answer now, like yeah, to find can, out what the problem was so he can, I, I can take uh, continue it if, it's... if you want. Um, so yeah, basically last time we, we spoke, we talked about testing the model for um, an actual portfolio um, to see if it worked as an active portfolio management tool and um, to be brief, it doesn't work as a portfolio management tool uh, or it didn't yet. Uh, it did work or it still, it, it still works as an index replication model. Um, but the way it's set up, it, it doesn't work when you try to move weights around that are too close to the original weights. Um, meaning if you already are invested 100%, then the model doesn't work so that you could switch around the weight enough um, and it would just return a beta, the same beta uh, and take the hit in the, um, in the, no, it doesn't matter how far away it is. So, uh, but, so Rodrigo, but, if I could just ask you a quick question before like, yeah. you finish. Um, is the issue have to deal with the weights not adding up to 100% because you can't buy fractional shares in this case? Or is it some other error that's coming up? No, uh, no, there is um, in, the, in the ones matrix that we set up, uh, which is the main component of the optimization model. Um, that matrix does not work as for active management, it, but it does work for replication. So what um, do you mean by that? It works for a replication. Meaning if you start, if you start from zero, mm -hmm. you can create a, a new portfolio. But if you start from a, an already invested portfolio, you can't switch around the weights. Okay. And is the issue that it's getting an error message, you're not getting an output, or it's just not like it's rebalancing the portfolio and coming up with new weights. It's just when you run out the factor regression model, then it's not meeting your expectations. No, the, the error is that the results, the resulting portfolio is the same portfolio. Okay. So no weights are being rebalanced. Correct. Gotcha. So um, it, 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 it allows for enough error within the betas so that it returns the same portfolio if there is an already existing portfolio. However, if you do not have any investments already, meaning a replication technique, it does work within a, set a certain range. Um, having said that, uh, I've been working on setting up a new uh, or an adjusted port, uh, optimization model. Mm -hmm. um, at first, I was trying to work with the with the same one we had already and just tweak it enough so that it it can uh, work out these mistakes. Um, however, I turned in with some issues there uh, with the problem getting uh, into the quadratic uh, optimization realm. Mm -hmm. um, and it got a little tricky to code. Uh, eventually, I went to Sulaga uh, to figure out if there was a way to keep keep it as simple as we could, meaning try to keep it in the linear optimization realm uh, and still work with 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 it. Uh, and it turns out that we we can. Um, I, I do now have the, the new optimization problem set up uh, and it works as a linear optimization model still. However, I have not been able to test it within the code. Um, it looks good, but uh, without uh, the, the proper tests, I, can, I can't tell for sure.
Gotcha. Yeah. And that all makes sense. I mean, that's, I was going to say like halfway through that answer that I was like, did you go see Professor Zulaga yet? Cause he'd be able to help. Um, I mean, I agree with what he said because uh, in terms of best fit models, like there is a strong like correlation coefficient with the residual, not the residual with uh, the best fit model, like a linear regression in the multi-factor model works. You know, it actually has a very strong prediction power. It's statistically significant. It has all the check boxes of what you need in running out statistical regression. So like linear regression should still work. I don't think the issue is like having to shift to a quadratic um, version of it. Um, I get like, so I guess I have to ask, like when you showed Zulaga the model, and I'm sure you explained to some aspect of what you explained to me, um, did he give any recommendations or opinion as to why he thinks it's not rebalancing? I don't know if you looked at your code, maybe you have it in your code, a catch statement to like stop rebalancing if something occurs, but. Um, so we didn't go through the original model uh, or I didn't go with, through the original model with him. Uh, but the, the main issue is, um, as I said, the ones matrix, meaning it's set up so that um, the dot product of the ones matrix and the, and the weights mm -hmm. give a weighted average of, um, of, the, of the stocks that meet our requirements. If we have already weights in place, mm -hmm. then the matrix itself will adjust or will not adjust in this case um, because the weights will work out with the matrix to be the same ones. Um, meaning the constraint is working against, against us in this, in this yeah. specific case. I don't okay. know if that, that makes sense. No, that, that's helpful. That's really, I was just trying to narrow down the potential reasons. And I think I just narrowed it down. So it sounds like the issue is in the logic of the optimization structure as opposed to the actual like code. So for yes. example, like, it sounds like in your constraints, I don't know if this is a specific one, but you know, one of the constraints and like, uh, you know, a lot of these type of like optimization models that I'm sure you've seen in portfolio, like optimization class, is that one of the constraints is that the sum of like the weights add up to one but you can tweak that in a lot of industry models to account for leverage. And it sounds like we're not in this case. So for example, if I'm understanding it correctly and I haven't looked at the code, but this is an interactive model, the second you, the weights, the second you were to rebalance one stock and you would remove its weight, it would have to automatically re-add the weight you just took off to another stock to always keep it at a hundred. And I'm assuming somewhere in the actual computation is it just kind of like falls apart because it's set to one. I'm curious, like, I mean, I'm not positive if the issue is leverage, but it's worth trying. Just try seeing if you can adjust the uh, weight optimization, like the weight constraint to be greater than one or just remove mm -hmm. the constraint in general or yeah. to zero. No, yeah, I, I get what you're saying. Um... I, it should not fix the issue, I think, um, but it's definitely something worth, worth looking at. Um, I, I, I know what you're saying. I did not want to account for leverage to, uh, to this point yet. Mm -hmm. uh, eventually it, it would get there, uh, but right now I, I didn't want to work with leverage and have the, the weights. Um, be outside of the equity realm, um, but but it's it's definitely something worth looking at uh, to see if that could work around the problem. Um, yeah. But but yeah, as as you said, it, the, the 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 main issue was is not within the coding or 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 with the problem itself. It's with the logic of the optimization, which, as I said, it does work as an index propagation model, which is mm -hmm. what it started out to be um so that's a good good thing um bad thing is we did think it could work for active management uh turns out it, it it doesn't so so yeah I, I i started to to work around the original problem uh eventually i figured that the best solution for this was to work out a new 
uh, model, uh, which is generally based off the same thing, obviously, but but it does change enough so that it should work around uh, active management issues. Yeah, I'd agree. And I'd also say like, this is a good problem to have because like we keep refreshing, like you have to remember, like this is a capstone project in a prestigious like master's program. So of course, like it's not going to be an easy solution from start to finish, like in this product roadmap, like we've done so much, and like, yes, we've account, or we've come across some barriers, but nothing like major so far, in my opinion, until now, that doesn't mean this is like a, like a roadblock we can't get by because it's good. It's not like we ran everything out and the results were just underperforming. That would be a different issue. That would not necessarily be concerning, but then we'd say, oh, like all this work, like the end result isn't as influential as we thought it was, but at least we have one. Here we're saying, no, we still think we can develop this great product and this great idea, we're just at a point where it's getting a little bit difficult to get to the output as opposed to seeing what the output is, if that makes any sense. So, yeah, no, I agree. I agree completely with that. So yeah, I think I think it is good to tweak the logic because of course, like you, you also know, like looking back over the past year, like I'm sure you've learned so much about like one part being the coding, one part being the logic, one part being like how factors like investing works, one part about being like how covariance matrix plays a parts in this. But like you can now use that information and like with the rest of the team to tweak the logic of the model. Because I agree, like when I set out with like the how we are adjusting the weights to rebalance it uh, to account for certain like sensitivities in active management, like I kept bringing up the fact that it's not done in industry that like it's not that common to be done in the industry, but they want it. <laughs> it's not that common because it's not that easy to do. Um, and that's the whole reason we're exploring it in academia in a master's program. So like this problem, like I'm almost surprised that it's uh, taken so long to occur in a good way, because like I expected like it to be difficult around this stage to like actually get the model to adjust the weights to get it. And it seems like we're almost there, but we're not there exactly. But again, like to summarize, like I think it's a good problem to have it just still requires some work to actually get the logic and the structure of like what we're trying to solve correct. Correct, yeah, yeah, I, I agree completely with that. Uh, anything from the team? Um, ask him what, um, I, I, are you assisted, assisting Rodrigo or are you doing your own thing at this point? What's going on there? Um, so to as up. I told, yeah, as I told you guys, before, I was working on making this as, as dynamic as possible and I thought we were done and tried tried to run it. That's when we had this problem, like having the same uh, uh, index. So I asked Rodrigo's help, and since then he has been trying to figure out how the optimization, how to figure out the optimization part. Mm -hmm. um, so it was mostly we were waiting for Rodrigo to uh, be able to figure out that part. And once that's figured out, uh, we're gonna move on with the rest of the project. So what do you, I guess, uh, because the goal at some point here would be nice to put something together and 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 have it featured somewhere. Uh, I know. So where do you see this in next semester? Um, I mean. If we can figure out to make to make it work with the active management, um, mm -hmm. like we can, so it can be, you know, it can work with different portfolios and different stuff, but we need to figure the active management part first because this was a replicate, the replicating, it was replicating, but if we want to translate it uh, into the active management part, we need to figure out the optimization uh, part now. So if you can figure it out, figure that part out, then we can move on, I think. So Jordan, let's see if that works. Do you uh, kind of, what kind of article, what kind of paper do you think could be written or something like that? What that would be of interest to, to, to the to practitioners basically. Yeah, I think, I mean, I think to be honest, like uh, we should like as a team focus a lot on like the current like objective Rodrigo has at hand with like trying to get the optimization model to work. And I'm saying that because I think a lot of like, like obviously this isn't like a startup, this isn't a project, but like I can still use the term like the IP in this case 
is really on getting that optimization model to work correctly. Because I think like the index replication is amazing, but that is happening in the industry that it has been written about in academia. Like more like a, a more data-driven approach to factor modeling has been done already. Like that's what I studied in like when I first did that. Now you're actually taking it one step further and you're being able to have a tool that will allow act like allow managers to adjust their portfolio to be like exposed to certain factors. Like I think that as that part right there is what the paper can be written about. Like, but it's like getting there. You know, the paper can be, essentially the paper can be about how you did it. Um, but and you've written the whole paper, but you now are waiting. You're now writing the conclusion of it. You're now writing the climax of the story to be able to say how you got it to work. I think that's the most important because once you have it, I think like, and you like, you know, you test it on multiple portfolios, you get it working. Like you can, I can, uh, like obviously I work in private markets, not public markets. So it's a little bit different, but I still have, you still clients you can reach out to certain banks, prop shops, hedge funds. You can be like, hey, like I'm not saying you should implement this, but can we just test it on your portfolio and we'll let you know what factors you're currently exposed to because they probably have no idea. That right there could be so beneficial for them. If they wanted to take it to the next level, they can say, oh my God, like we're 70% exposed to value right now. We had no idea. Like we actually don't favor to be so heavily valued on the discounted market. We rather, you know, adjust it to be uh, more to factor exposed towards momentum given the heightened volatility of market uncertainty. You know, like these are, tools that these are concerns that investment managers have right now but they don't really have a way to expose themselves to more like obviously like they can provide technical analysis and momentum but there's no way to truly rebalance portfolio to adjust their exposure to the actual factor that is momentum just using momentum as an example um yeah. so i think that's where the value add really is if you can be able to take any portfolio but let's not like, I know it's a few steps. Let's just say if you're able to take a single portfolio and just tell them what factors they're exposed to, that's easy. That's just running a multi-factor regression model based on the historical returns. The big value add is being able to say, oh, you're exposed to these factors, but you want to be exposed this much more or less exposed to this factor. We can do that for you. We just need to click a button, you know, run out the optimization, run out their regression, and then it'll tell you, if you rebalance and you restructure your portfolio and you tilt your like allocations this way, you're new. If you rerun that regression and see what you're exposed to, you will now be at these factor levels that you were targeting. And that last part is what's not really happening uh, that so many investment managers would love to have exposure to. I assume you okay with that? That yeah, would be sure. nice. I mean, you have time. I mean, we don't have to do it by December. Um, but because um, Rodrigo is 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 graduating uh, at the end, so um, let's see. Maybe we have other people within um, within the team. Uh, within the, I'm having new people joining in in the spring actually. So um, that could be of interest. And the rest of the cool yep. thing is too. Like obviously, this is just looking forward. Um, like for next steps, but like. If we can get that optimization model to work and we can provide that value add, it's almost like you have a sales tool that you can provide and you've done great research on it. But the interesting thing is that it will then allow you to test strategies. So like, I know like this isn't for this semester and we haven't been doing it, but for example, there's certain factors that are considered to perform in certain market cycles and certain movements. Um, so if we now had a tool that can adjust your factor weights to certain levels that we want to target, we can now apply strategy of what factors we want to target and then compare how that performance actually looks on a relative basis to other benchmarks. Then this project has now gone from just being a tool creation to an actual investment strategy, which I know a lot of other the Capstone projects are. Just because like Patrick, I know I, like I follow the like MFE Instagram and I see like, I just see like there's different projects that are now targeting more like systematic investment strategies. Mm -hmm. And like when I first started, I wanted like factor investing. I like the project I was first working on, I wanted to be investment strategy. But once I got dug into the weeds and actually started building out this like factor model, I realized like it's really not an investment strategy tool. It's a risk management tool. 
So we're still at the risk management aspect in terms of building out a tool that can allow them to be exposed to certain factors. But once that's working, we can now take it, we can now utilize the IP from the risk management tool to try to look at investment strategies around factor investing, which I think could be really interesting. But all of that is hypothetical until we actually get the tool to work. Okay. Asim, you'll let me know if you need more um, brain power on this, you know, more people with specific skills or whatever. So we could. Um, yeah, sure. Definitely. Okay. Any more questions? That's it. And that's okay. it. Okay, great. Jordan. Awesome. Thank you.